Well, good morning. Welcome to Coffee with a Pastor. Hope you're having a good morning. We have seen a shift in the book of Acts. The beginning of Acts, the church grows uh, rapidly. It grows by the thousands and tens of thousands, and a lot of people think in the hundreds of thousands. But there's one thing in common. They're all Jewish believers, or they're Gentiles that have converted to the Jewish faith. But something has happened differently beginning in chapter 10, when Peter receives the vision of the unclean animals, and he's told to take and eat, and, and he says, I'm not going to because they're unclean. And God says, whatever I say is clean, fine. And then the people from Cornelius' house come. Cornelius is a Roman soldier who, who is a God-fearer and prays and gives to the poor, and God uh, has Peter go and share with uh, Cornelius, his household, his friends, and they received Christ. And it says that they were, they received the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit of Christ that he had sent, and then they're baptized uh, in water uh, in the name of Jesus. And then word of that gets around, Peter's question about it, Peter shares what's happened, and most of the disciples, though not all of the followers, but, uh, but most of the disciples were excited about that, that God had chosen the Gentiles. Well, that word's gotten around, uh, even up to Antioch, which is in modern-day Syria. And in verse 19 of chapter 11 of Acts, it says, Now there were there who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch. Now, there are words, remember, that uh, the Apostle Paul, or Saul at the time, had started a persecution. They scattered, and they, they went to some of the neighboring uh, countries. Antioch is one. Uh, some of them, uh, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks or Gentiles also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. So now we've got another group in Antioch who are not Jewish, have not converted to Jewish faith, but now they are accepting Jesus. News of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. So they sent a representative, they sent someone to, to check it out, to help. And when he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. So Barnabas comes, sees it's really of God, and just encourages it. Then Barnabas realizes he needs some help. So in verse 25, then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Okay, Most of us go by the name of Christian today. And uh, we were first called Christians at Antioch. They're in modern-day Syria. And uh, during this time, uh, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch, and they they were prophesying things and, and all these things. Antioch's going to be very significant for a number of reasons. Outside of uh, what happened at Caesarea with Cornelius and them, this is going to be the biggest outpouring that we're going to see early on upon the non-Jewish folks, upon the Gentiles, and God's pouring his spirit out upon them. Uh, the church sends Barnabas, and he sees it's of God, so he continues. He goes and gets help, and he's going to get Saul, who's going to become the Apostle Paul. And Antioch becomes a very important place. This is where most of the mission activity will, will, will go forth from. It's where uh, kind of the headquarters for, for Paul and Barnabas and for the, the church sends out uh, uh, missionaries, and they will send out Paul and them on their missionary journeys. 
Uh, it's kind of a sending area where, where they go. Um, that area, that part of the country has had very early Christians. I, uh, I was saddened because the oldest church building in the world was in Syria. And, uh, of course, ISIS needed to, felt like they needed to blow it up. And also, it's not, uh, I think it's still there, but I don't think it's not usable anymore. Uh, they were still meeting in it when they blew it up. I, I've really read some very startling accounts of uh, a lot of the Christians who were in Syria who go probably, roots go way back to there, to, to Acts, who were staying. Uh, when ISIS was taken over and they were being killed, but they, they weren't leaving and they were ministering when everybody else was leaving. Uh, it's an amazing thing. And uh, a lot of the Syrians today are, are Christians because the refugee camps, uh, I've heard that revival has taken place in those. But it's significant today and it's significant uh, back then. Uh, very significant church. Very significant place. And it's also the first place where people begin to call people Christians. Now, these people began to act differently, be different. And so they just called them Christians, which kind of means Christ-like or it means little Christ. And uh, I, I think it was probably uh, to make fun of them. But to be honest with you, uh, what better way can... You be described. I don't know how I could be described better than somebody looking at you and saying, you like like a little Christ. Because that is my goal. That is what I desire. That's what you should desire, is to look like Christ. And so I like the name, and it and apparently stuck. Uh, they had several names for Christians in the, in the New Testament. Uh, the Way, uh, you know, they had others as well. So uh, that's where we see Christians come. But we're going to read more. Uh, tomorrow we'll look at Peter and his great escape. But then we're going to start getting into the missionary journeys, which are going to be primarily the Apostle Paul and, uh, and some of his cohorts. And they're going to be going and spreading the gospel all over. And I mean, they, they go all over and th spread throughout the world. Uh, pretty much up until then, been just in one spot, part of the world, but it's going to spread throughout. And we'll read about it. It's very exciting. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow.